Hey guys, welcome back. Whoa, it's been a week since I posted my last plant tour video. How wild. You know, after my Christmas tree video, if you missed that, please watch that. A lot of good Christmassy vibes there. But I, I don't know. I felt very tired the, the days after I went back to work one day. So I'm here with Baymax. I'm drinking some Americano. And it's already the afternoon, but I'm still so tired. So there's a bunch of chores, a lot of plant updates. Miss Crystallinum Magnificum here is doing fantastic. And Mr. Metallicum, the ripped one, she is growing really big, anyhow. I actually want to start off with this beauty right over here. This is my Philodendron Glorious. So if y'all remember, Future Kevin put in a picture. I had this huge Philodendron Glorious and you know, she was wonderful. The moment I had spider mites, it was over. It was really over. So I actually chopped it down to just this one leaf over here and she pushed out a new leaf. So I need to water her cause she is dry. The other cutting is right there. She was air layered in sphagnum moss. So then I was able to put her in an aeroid mix. So let's just grab those two. Okay, here's one. And here is the second one, okay. So thank you to everyone who commented about the mosquito dunks. A lot of people said more so that they use the mosquito bits with success. Maybe I'll try that soon. Um, because I have more nematodes here and I haven't put any beneficial nematodes, plus they're dry. We're doing them today. Oh my God, and there was a wonderful comment. They would put this bag of nematodes on the soil and then they would put a layer of wet moss just because this needs to be like wet in order for the nematodes to kind of go into the soil or arid mix. So maybe I'll do that as well. Do I have moss? I do have moss. Okay, let's do that today. Okay, let me just talk about her for a second. So this one's actually the mama here. You can see roots. They are amazing, guys. Again, I plan to do a spider mite video sometime. I'm guessing it's gonna be December, guys. But I was just testing the method where you submerge plants in hot water to kill whatever mite exists. So that includes broad mites, that includes spider mites, and I did an experiment with this one. And at the time she only had this leaf, you could see that she did suffer a little bit of damage here and no spider mites. So I haven't touched it. Like I know I reintroduced her into my main collection, but she was on the top shelf away from all my plants. When she was isolated, she wasn't in a place where there was a lot of light. So I'm guessing that's why this new leaf, I mean, she's so gorgeous guys. I'm just guessing that that's the reason why she's a little small, but guys, there's a new leaf coming that light green at the top there. Seriously, if you like the look of the Philodendron Melanochrysum, but you're so over the Philodendron Melanochrysum, you need to get the Glorious. I don't think I've had a bad situation growing these plants. They grow up so much and I do plan to put a moss pole. We'll see guys. I have some Californicus beneficial bug um, in these sachets here. I'm just, you know, using it as a preventative. And the second one here guys, this one was truly infested. I used another beneficial, I don't know what it's called. It starts with a P, I'll put the name here. And it worked, so. Okay, so I have the nematode sac situation happening there. Just adding a layer with sphagnum moss. And I'm doing the same with the other one. It's on the other side. <laughs> and we're just watering all the way through. This Glorious over here, um, she's in an aeroid mix that I made about a year and a half ago, I think, or a year ago. It's a mix that is way too dense. You know, I would love to change it, but unfortunately I don't have any aeroid mix at the moment. Again, oh, oh my God, I'm not supposed to get these sachets wet. Oh no. Uh, one thing that I did guys to kind of limit and try to make it easier to get rid of the spider mites is basically hiding off a lot of foliage where you can see a lot of webs. And I mean, I know it's difficult if they only have one or two leaves. This one had a lot. I want to say probably had six leaves. I wasn't necessarily worried just because the mother plant here had a really good root system. So I knew that she was going to push a growth point out of the node that was already there. Clearly she's doing just fine. These clear planters are eight inch. I think they're eight inch pots and they're from Raven Vision Orchids. I bought them online. It's a place that's located um, here in Ontario. Cause I know every time I show these pots, I get a question of where, you know, I got them. And obviously I like to take my time. Um, these haven't been watered in a month. Taking your time in the sink to make sure the whole medium is 
saturated. Oh, okay, guys. <laughs> There's another growth point. But future Kevin zoom in. Look at that new growth. But that's exciting, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, you can feel in the weight of the pot and the color that she is saturated. Second one looking good. I think I might need a few more seconds. There's one side that's a little dry. Oh yeah, and I forgot to show you, future Kevin zoom in. This is the new growth. So I can't wait for that one to grow. That's super exciting. I'm just gonna put her back. The roller coaster continues. <laughs> Miss Melna Chrysum here is reduced to one leaf because super infested this plant. Um, I just had to cut off all the leaves. What a roller coaster with this plant. Root rot and Lekka. Before that, she actually had thrips. And I didn't tell you, but when I first got it, this plant had scale. And then spider bites. Oh my gosh. Seriously, what a trooper. This Melnochrysum. Oh my gosh. So, um, let's wash down the leaf and try not to make a mess. <laughs> so, I still get questions. Um, I did not grow this plant to the size. This Melnochrysum is probably my only plant that I bought big. I know I'm gonna make a mess right now. Ooh. Oh my God. Ah. <laughs> the reason why I'm washing the leaf down, and I'll talk about this in my spider mite video, the pests that I use, they can only survive on a spider mite diet. If they don't have any spider mites, the beneficial bug will die. They basically, I, I mean, to my understanding, I don't think they could live off anything else or they definitely need spider mites to reproduce. What I did with a few plants that were really infested, I didn't clear the webs, I didn't wash down the plant, I didn't do anything. The thing about, this is turning out to be the, a spider mite video. The thing with that beneficial, and again, I'll put the name here, is that I think they're the only bug that can also go into spider mite webs. I don't think Californicus is able to, so that's why I'm washing it down. I don't want any issues for, you know, the Californicus. So again, pop popper, some sphagnum moss just over and just making sure she's fully saturated. Oh my God, guys, I'm looking out the window. I think I'm like the snow slash winter holiday whisperer because it just started snowing. And if y'all watched my Christmas video of my Christmas tree and putting it up, it started snowing once I put it, I put it, <laughs> once I put my Christmas tree up. Oh, it's so pretty guys. Ooh, this is a good stretch for your back guys. I, I, I did get a few questions about my back, not recently, but a while ago. I was having so much back pain and the thing that made it go away was just working out and building those muscles in my back. The back pain basically disappeared. <laughs> you know, after I got sick about a month ago, my lungs and my breathing, it just wasn't the same. So I haven't been working out. It's been a month and I think because of that, my muscles are just kind of like melting away. <laughs> Let's take a look here, guys. Let's take a look. Okay. Looking good. So I'm just gonna put her back. She lives next to my bed. Oh my God, there's a fungus now. Oh my God, I want to kill you. Oh, I didn't get it. Okay, unfortunately he got away. <laughs> I'm sorry guys. While we're here, let's do some strawberry shake watering, the propagations. So I'm just gonna pop them in the sink and then I'm going to bottom water them because again, they're dry. I'm so apprehensive of getting or, or creating an aerid mix because that's, how I think the spider mites got in the first place. So they're just gonna live in these small pots for now. And yeah, so let me just grab them. Boom, guys, they're looking so good. Okay, actually guys, <laughs> let's do the epipremnipanatum marble. Um, the new leaf is peeking out this way. Um, and the moss pole is dry again. In the past week, it's been, weather is basically getting or the humidity is dropping and so a lot of things are drying out really quickly i watered this like recently and she is just dry i'm just putting nematodes and i'm trying to put nematodes in the moss they're just gonna fall out when i water it what am i thinking maybe i'll put them after okay <laughs> because fungus gnats they just like attack also plants are in moss Okay, we're all set. Look at you. I really hope because like the last leaf didn't unfurl completely over here. So this leaf didn't completely unfurl. I think it's because like I didn't water her enough. I'm hoping that this one opens up. Guys, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so excited for these. Oh my God. So let's go. Oh my God. This one's so pretty. The mother leaf is just everything. And I was so worried because the first leaf was this green one. Then she pushed out this balanced one and then look at the newest one. 
Oh, so pretty guys. Okay. Oh my God, this one's great too. Okay, mother leaf, second leaf, third leaf, and then this is definitely a vergy leaf. Wow, look at that pattern. Oh my God. I already got rid of the majority of the ones that weren't variegated. And obviously the goal is to sell these in 2023. And y'all know that I also have cuttings in water right now. Two cups that are in water. This leaf doesn't really look variegated, but technically the first leaf, which is that one, is like super variegated. So I'm looking forward to see what the other leaf looks like. I tend to see that you kind of have a barely variegated or green leaf and then the next one is super variegated. I've just seen that with a lot of these strawberry shakes. Oh, this one's super dehydrated. But look at her, oh my gosh. She, this leaf wasn't that variegated, but she pushed out a balanced leaf. She is pushing out a leaf. Now, I've gotten this question in the past. I think Grania a while ago asked me about the comparison of the strawberry shake and the pink princess in regards to variegation, but also about the leaves getting stuck. If y'all have owned a pink princess, they are very annoying. I already got rid of mine because I just couldn't with the leaves getting stuck. Strawberry shakes, they're a bit more forgiving. Um, there are times, like I think if I water her or I keep on top of the watering, this wouldn't have happened. Oh my God, this one is so pretty. Okay, this one is one that I ignored so much. This leaf is like stunting. I'm just looking for any spider mites if they're present. You know, you always gotta assess your plants even afterwards. <sighs> I'm just blowing the dust because I'm like, is that a spider mite or is it dust? Oh, you're kidding me. So I kind of was losing hope because the leaves before this were like green, but like not that variegated. Look at this, insane. And then the one after that, are you kidding me? I, I, I just can't, okay. Oh my God, this leaf is so cute. Oh my God, look at this. Ooh, oh my gosh. Oh. <sighs> And this is good because like the one, you know, before that is like kind of marbled in. <gasps> Sorry, there's some that like, I haven't really looked at these shakes. It's because, okay, this strawberry shake is really like plays with my emotions. I'm pretty sure that she had a super variegated leaf, which is now dead because it was predominantly variegated. So let's take her off. And then after that, she just, I mean, still pretty. Like the pink looks pretty, but it was just speckly. The leaf before the newest one was this one, totally green. So I almost propagated it. And then she pushed out this. Strawberry shakes, unpredictable. I don't have the room to kind of wait for strawberry shakes to grow to this size. Like I think, are there like seven leaves? I'm glad I did wait because this leaf is just gorgeous. Yeah, I don't know. Do you see what I mean? This plant as is, yeah, I wouldn't sell this. I don't feel comfortable. This is not variegated enough for the price that it's going for. I feel like I would sell this like really cheap. Yeah, I don't know. You see what I mean? I might cut it back to this leaf because this leaf actually looks pretty good, but like the rest are just kind of splashy. Okay, mother leaf, sorry. I'm just like going through all, I'm just showing them all. I just haven't seen these in a while. So I guess I just want to do it with you guys. <laughs> Look at the new leaf. At least this side's gonna be variegated. Should I try to open you? Okay, the other side doesn't look variegated, but still, that's something. Wow. Okay, this one's gonna be a good one because like the first leaf, super variegated. Then the next leaf is this. The mother leaf had a bit there. <laughs> this one is so cute. Look at you. Super variegated. Like these are yellow. <laughs> the mother leaf was very variegated. Man, look at this. Okay, there's two left. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry if this is boring. I think the last time I just like put them all in the sink and I just walked away because I was just like, I have so much to do. Oh my God, this one actually pushed out a bunch compared to the mother leaf. So this is what I was talking about. So the first leaf, super variegated. The next leaf, super green, not a splash of variegation anywhere. Um, I do see this pattern a lot with strawberry shakes, which is like kind of frustrating because like you start to panic a little bit. <laughs> okay guys, we are here. I'm just sprinkling. I opened the sachet and I'm just, oh my God, I can't talk. <laughs> I'm just sprinkling the nematodes over the um, substrate. I said in the past that one bag is good for a five gallon pot. And obviously these are like tiny and we're just gonna go around and ooh, is the stopper in? Yeah. Oh, no, it isn't. Okay, now it's in. <laughs> 
Ooh, okay, so, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna leave them in the sink for, I'm seeing on average, it's like 15 to 20 minutes. And then I'll put them back on this tray and then just pop them under a grow light. Maybe I'll clean this a little bit. Okay, oh my God, the tree so pretty oh my god can we look at it again guys i cannot it's not gonna focus i cannot guys <laughs> so pretty the train is still here the village is still here i have a stable covering i had to move it to get around the plants <laughs> okay we're back in here i'm gonna water these anthuriums so mr metallicum that's probably why the leaf is growing so much i'm just watering the metallicum at the base this is definitely a plant I don't want to, but I know eventually I'm gonna have to propagate her because the leaves are just so big. And obviously I've been trying to put moss around the roots that grow out of the pot. And so I usually fill right under the maximum here just because this dries out so much. And the same with this one. I can't get over this leaf. I need to stop touching it though. And so this one is one plant. There's actually a second one in here. That's what this leaf is. So cute. Each plant is pushing out an inflow. Look at that. The second one is right over here. She's not open yet. And so yeah, we'll see. You know, again, I usually cut them off and I'm just gonna be so sad because you're gonna suffer. <laughs> again, I went a little over, but that's okay. Again, there's two plants with big robust root systems here. So that should be fine. And this is just my Magnificum cross with her gal. Here's one of the leaves, future can zoom in. I don't know why it's bending this way, but she is still a little cutie. Oh my God, water went everywhere. I'll try not to wet the bed again, guys. Okay, I'm just grabbing and taking a look at my Anthurium Wattaburianum. Again, these are the sachets. I'm just looking to see, cause I do see some movement, like definitely bugs on the leaf, which is great. I mean, obviously like it's bad if they're spider mites, but um, based on what I can see, they are the beneficial. I did cut that crunchy leaf because I just couldn't with it. <laughs> so we still have one leaf on this beautiful plant. Again, my goal is to make this plant happy. And I think I just need to keep on top of the watering, which I haven't. So same idea. I know I have the moss here and like you are supposed to moisten the moss often. <laughs> the thing is again, fungus gnats live in moss. I have been doing nematodes also with the moss. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to use them, but I've just been doing it. And again, guys, these anthograms, they're not under any grow lights. If they were under a grow light, I would have to put it really, really far from them just because they burn not as bad as like philodendrons. Anthuriums, they could do well in like medium light conditions. Okay, there's a lot of new leaves. All my anthuriums, Mr. Metallicum up there is doing just fine. My decipens, I cut her down just to this one leaf. And finally, guys, look at this beauty. I'm not gonna touch her. I'm so worried because this leaf was getting stuck and I had to free it. I do think that's a thing when anthuriums mature, sometimes you need to help them. Oh, oh my gosh, she's so pretty. Now, here's the thing, guys. I don't know if y'all can see, but future Kevin, zoom in. So I have a strong suspicion that that's going to be an inflorescence based on what I know. And because I'm not entirely sure if this is truly an anthurium decipens, because originally this was sold as a salgarens at the time the salgarens was going through reclassification, I think. I don't even know if that's the right word to use. And so the seller was like, okay, it's a decipens. I think I read somewhere that the decipens inflow smells really bad. So I think that's what differentiates Desipins versus Salgarin. So I'm kind of scared to let it flower, but I just want to make sure like it's ID'd properly. So if the inflow opens and it smells really bad, then it's a Desipins. If it doesn't, then it's a Salgarin. I'm just talking. I don't know why, about nothing. So I'm so excited, oh my God. Don't touch it, Kevin. And the one beside it, Miss Fercatum is doing so well. Look at the new leaf. I just love this topaz realness, guys. She's gonna grow a little bit more, which is very exciting. And this is another anthurium that has only one leaf. Where are you? I can't even show you. <laughs> Uh, both of the reservoirs are pretty dry, so I'm just gonna fill them up with water. So the Desipins and the Furcatum, I got them together about two and a half years ago. I don't think I'm ever going to let those plants go. They mean just so much to me just because they were kind of my first anthuriums. And just remembering how they came to me. Here's the Desipins, super tiny. I didn't know anything. 
about and theoriums. Um, this was the stage where I was putting everything in Lekka, so I put this one on Lekka and she just flourished. The reason why I transferred her into Pawn is because the roots are very robust. You'll find that when you have anthurium roots sitting in water for too long, the plants do suffer. So, you know, I had to keep cutting the leaves. I mean, the roots, not the leaves. Okay, <laughs> and if y'all see these bins here, remember the video where I was taking all the Hoyas out that have been in these bins? I did find on one of the Hoyas, um, like two adult spider mites, and I didn't want to risk it, so I put everything back <laughs> in these bins. Bought that beneficial bug, and you know, they've been living here. <laughs> Update on my Alocasia Golden Bone. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? This is beautiful. There are couple new leaves right down here guys and then one that hasn't unfurled completely um there's one with a flower and i just have to cut it off and it's just annoying because there's no leaves coming out of this plant and the next one is going to be another flower so it's just like so annoying when it's in this state when it has no leaves i like to cut out the blooms because i don't know it's just too much guys okay so we're back at the sink um we're all watered through and all the mediums look pretty moist so i'm just gonna put all the props back Okay, and back we go. Let's have an update on this Philodendron Majestic that I propagated straight into Lekka. Um, so there are three in total in here. Number one, number two, <laughs> and number three. So the main reason why I want to look to see how it's doing is because this leaf is not doing so great. Um, sometimes when this leaf is dying, there might be another growth point. Another reason is perhaps it's rotted there's no root growth but the other two they look okay so i at least think there's a little bit of roots on the other two okay let's take a look i might just pull them Ooh. oh look at this look at this cute oh my gosh it's so hard to show that guy is super fuzzy um it's the only one and this is the top cutting which is fantastic let's pull out the one that's not doing great yeah there's nothing happening you'd see that all the adventitious roots dried up there's a chance that there's a new root that grows out of that new growth point this leaf is actually <laughs> it is a goner i so i might cut this leaf off and put it in a prop box i know i put one wet stick in that prop box with all my mcdowells so maybe i'll do that i'll check up on that and then we'll pop this one in and the third one is not rooted which is hilarious because she is super hydrated. Like she's not dehydrated at all. Um, I mentioned before that this is grow light damage, so it hasn't changed. Hey, look guys, the only thing that's different is that this node is super white and it seems to me that she's ready to push out a new leaf from that growth. So yeah, it's like super swollen, which is usually what happens. So we'll see, she's still doing okay. And I just want to point out again, not rotten because i remember i propagated straight into leka not squishy at all guys including the one that didn't root i'm just gonna put two of them back and then i'll put the other one in a prop box i'm, trying, I'm gonna try to be careful with this root because it's so beautiful don't break it kevin don't break it kevin I look at the water line so knowing where the cuttings are i might put the water line just here I'm gonna say this again you got to keep them super wet especially at this stage because if you don't they'll just dry up and they won't root or anything back it goes under the grow light okay <laughs> here's the perlite prop box it doesn't look like there's anything happening just a lot of algae because she's right under the grow light yeah there's like nothing new for these maybe i'll cover the new growth points because like i said that's usually where the new roots will grow from, the majestic. It's doing that same thing, guys, because this wasn't a thing before. It seems to me that she's not going to root from the existing aerial roots here, but look at this right in the center. Fuji Kevin, zoom in. She didn't look like this before, so I think she's ready to push out a new growth from there. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to cut the leaf and just pop it beside it uh, she could use a bit more water 
So I'm just adding just plain tap water and we're just gonna close it up again. And no fungus gnats. Oh, there's a dead one here. Okay, I'm super excited. Um, just an update with these alocasia corms. Miss Silver Dragon is doing just fine. Uh, let me just put in some more water. So she's doing fine. This is what I'm excited about. The sun is setting. <laughs> My alocasia black velvet here. She finally has opened completely. Um, I left this one, the mother plant at work. She's kind of dying right now because like, I think they're overwatering her. So I'm so happy that she's here with me. And then I think there's maybe one or two corms left. I just saw this and like, I don't know what's gonna happen, but right there, she wasn't like that before. Do you see it, future Kevin Zoom in? Right there, guys. Super excited. Oh, let me see if I can take this one out. This one is the same. There's no roots. Who knows if anything's gonna happen with her. So I think this one, I'm just adding water. She does need a little bit more because she's sitting. Oh my God, the sun is really just changing. How I look here, um, the water lines up to here. Because the corms are up here, I'm gonna put a little bit more so it's kind of midway. But I don't know guys, I'm so excited for this. Did I do fill up the reservoir? I didn't, oh my God. Okay, I'm doing the same. Y'all can't see me, I'm doing the same. Okay, I'll put these back. Okay, Anthurium Moodyanum. <sighs> I'm embarrassed. Okay, so I'm gonna show this plant. The reservoir is like not, it's like not there. And like, I feel bad because I've, I've ignored this one. Y'all know that the roots looked good. She's not completely dry. Like you can see the condensation on the side of the now pot, but like so annoying. What is wrong with me? So I kind of want to take it out of the pot because I need to assess the roots. I need to see, you know, if they're still good because if not, then I'm going to put it back in water. I feel really bad. Let's start out with the one that's like falling out. Okay. Oh, the pond is dropping. Whoa. I'm not remembering if these were the roots before. They still look okay. And I'm feeling them. They're still wet. Like, that looks amazing, guys. It looks to me that there's two growth points. So that's a new one there. If I rotate her, there's another one right over here. So this one still looks good. Okay. Yeah, no, this is... This is definitely new growth. And do you see that guys? Oh, okay. That's wonderful news. You can see that some have dried out at the tip, but they still feel good. Oh, there's some branching there. Look. Whoa, guys. Whoa. Alrighty. I might add some more pond because she's looking a little unstable. Alrighty, I'm just gonna add some water to fill the reservoir. We will look at the forgetty eyes in a bit, but like I was saying with those a week ago, I think they've been okay because the reservoir of these pots are way bigger than the other ones. So maybe that's why they haven't dried out completely. So that's always good news. Okay, you all saw her the last time, <sighs> but the leaf is just so just insanely beautiful, guys. Oh my gosh. How do you look like this? It's insane to me. Wow. Reservoir is fine. I want to look at the other one because she is. I just saw this now. She's pushing out a new leaf. How do we feel? <sighs> oh my gosh, you are dusty. You okay though? The tip's kind of dry. Look at her. Oh my God, super exciting. Okay, I'm just gonna run it under the faucet like where the new leaf is, just so there's some lubrication. Bam, okay, cute. And I'm just gonna put her back. It's funny because these leaves are like touching this cold, cold window. I've gone this comment in the past where I really need to move these leaves away from my windows. They are cooler than usual. However, when you're living in a tall condo, there's more insulation in the windows. It would be different if it was a house. Um, um, and I mean, houses are made differently. Their windows may or may not have that or those layers to protect it from the cold. So yeah, oh my God. Yeah, this one is like the windows right here. And she's just like, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, forgetty eyes are pretty resilient. Okay, I'm going back into the room. Okay, so 
This Hoya Thompsonia has been living here for a while. I think in one video I was debating if I should train it up a trellis. I think I decided that I wanted to keep it just trailing like this. The stuff at the top here is vermiculite. So the beneficials shipped in dry vermiculite. And so I just hadn't cleaned it. I just noticed guys, there are some blooms or they're not blooms yet, but Oh, I feel bad because I always underwater this one and I'm hoping, oh my God, there's more there. Oh my gosh, okay. I'm gonna vacuum her first. Yes, vacuum. Just so I contain the, the mess. <laughs> okay, let's look together because I only saw the two. <gasps> They're so beautiful, okay. This is the second one. Look at those. I showed this one already right over there. And are there more? Oh, right here, guys. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Okay, I know it hasn't bloomed yet because this bloomed for me once. Here is a picture of the blooms. Wow, these are probably one of the most, it's probably the strongest smelling Hoya that I have, I think. Um, it's like a perfumey smell. If you don't like that, don't get this Hoya. <laughs> and if y'all are wondering, she's living in Pawn. Um, I propagated this a lot. Um, I do think that, you know, the addition of a lot of light definitely helps, um, but I'm just gonna fill up the reservoir with just plain water. Ooh, I know it's hard to, see but she's at the halfway mark right over there you could see it bouncing a little bit so i'll put it back under a grow light and maybe tomorrow because there's one this one over here that's really pink it's probably gonna bloom we'll see again the tree looks so good the sun is just setting and it's getting really dark so like now the village and the tree they look so good um let's go back into the room i want to show you the orchids from the last video first of all miss miki fortune cat here Ooh, so this was the one before she opened the other flower look at her so she has these two gorgeous blooms i'm so in love wow 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 that's incredible oh orchids I have them here they're doing well, they feel very hydrated. This was the one with the new growth point. You see it, future Kevin zoom in right over there. So cute. So because I've seen, you know, these do so well, um, I mean, I know it's early on and I'm still monitoring them a lot, but I forgot, <laughs> don't judge me guys. I forgot that there are two more Phalaenopsis right by my window and like, they're dry. I'm gonna assess them. Probably gonna cut some roots, same as the last time. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna see. Oh gosh. Oh my god. This is so embarrassing. Okay. Because when I was transferring, and I didn't say this in the video, but I knew when I was transferring the other ones in Lekka, I was like, something's not making sense. Like I swear, I have more. Where are they? They were by my window, dying. Look at this. I don't even know which one. I think this is the Sogo. Is this the Sogo? Yeah. Phalaenopsis Sogo Diamond HLW. Oh my God, this root is like completely dry. I hate this. Okay, um, guys, it's bad. This one is bad. Okay, it doesn't look terrible, but this is probably worse than the other ones. First, look at the leaves. Wow. Then looking at the roots, look how wrinkly. Um, these are probably gonna rot. The ends of some are green still. Ooh, this one looks okay. Look, you could kind of see. So I'm just gonna submerge these in water and then I'm gonna put her in Lekka. We're gonna see what happens. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. The ones at the bottom, they look okay. There, that, this, that, okay. I'm just gonna take the moss off. Oh, there is a new root coming, okay. <gasps> Yeah, there's a few, okay. I can't even tell you which one this one is. Okay, so overall, a lot better than the other one, a lot better. And I was freaking out and very excited because one new root coming out and the second one. So looking at the leaves, this is the oldest one. It's definitely gonna go soon. Gonna keep it for now. Um, we're gonna see what happens. Gonna just run these under the faucet and just 
hydrate them a little bit. So it's not quite fully hydrated, but I just wanna show you the difference in color. So I just ran this one under the faucet a lot. You could see that a lot of the roots have turned green. Um, the one over here, super gray, super silver and wrinkly. You don't want your roots to look like this. There's a chance that these ones will fully rot and die. Um, this one was in better shape and I'm just gonna cut a few dead roots. Y'all can't see, but I'm cutting, like for example, this root is gonna go, the brown one. So I wanna show you something really cool with Phalaenopsis roots. Sometimes you think they're broken, like a lot of the time you'll see breaks just like that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that root is done. Looking at the color, feeling the roots, and just seeing if there's any new root growth growing from the bottom part. I'm trying to find a good example, this is hard. So higher up in the root, you can see that there's a break here. Look at the bottom. It's really branched out in three places. One, two, and then right in the middle, three. And there's even a break here. And a, an example of a part that's definitely dead. So it's broken at this point, but obviously this part is dead. So let's cut that off. So I'm using those same self-watering pots. I'm gonna put some LECA. And the thing I'm doing, differently i'm not hitting the nutrient solution up here if i hit the nutrient solution up here and the roots of the phalaenopsis are down here they will rot they are less forgiving if they're sitting in water so you never want to do that i'm basically just going to hit the water line hitting the wicks just so it keeps the like a little bit moist but not wet so i'm going to put this one in a bigger pot here i have some leka here this leka isn't pre-soaked i kind of stopped doing that guys it's still recommended just because the clay ball wow that was too dramatic what is wrong with me like the clay balls, they don't have an opportunity to soak up enough moisture. But I think in this case, with a Phalaenopsis, probably okay. Just like that, guys. Now we're gonna add the luck on top. Okay. <laughs> Super cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, so again, I'm only putting the water line up to the wicks. And that is one. Second one here in this smaller one. I think this is the four inch one. Just cause when you look at the roots, they're not that big, so you can just plop it in like that. Just like that, guys. And I'm gonna watch this one because unlike the other one, this one doesn't have any new roots and she was kind of in a worse state. This is gonna be a way that I will, that I will check upon them. Okay, again, only hitting the water at the wicks. And now I'm gonna put these under a grow light. Again, do they need that much light? No. Phalaenopsis actually do pretty well in lower light, but just because of the transfer, I do prefer putting them under grow light. So let's do that now. Ooh, it's dark. I'm gonna show you something very sad. You know, it's not the saddest because I do have the mother plant still. Let me actually grab her. Oh my God, even this one's not doing well. Okay, Hoya polyneura. So remember I propagated her. Wow, this one's this one's dry too. Oh my gosh, I'm just like, I need to stop ignoring these plants. Remember I propagated her, they're all dead. <laughs> There's a number of reasons why. So I didn't mention this in the video. After I propagated these cuttings, I put them in hot water. Like the temperature, I'm forgetting what the temperature is, but the temperature that I researched that would kill either spider mites or broad mites. This was just precautionary and I didn't see any spider mites or broad mites. Um, I think, and there are a few other plants that I did the hot water method on and they weren't rooted and they just shriveled up. Fr shriveled up. <laughs> what on earth? They're like totally done. Like I just pulled one out. So the lesson here is not to do that with cuttings because like, I mean, you saw the glorious. I dipped her in the same temperature and maybe because the plant was more mature, she had a large root system and I showed you guys in the beginning, but when they don't, this is the result. Let me show you a plant and another Hoya that actually did well. Hoya patrawawalai. I dipped the entire plant, not the leka ball, but the entire top part of the plant in the same temperature. And because, <laughs> I mean, guys, look at these roots. Because she had a big enough root system, she was able to kind of heal herself. There are some parts like here. So you can see there's some leaves that have some damage here. 
but overall like I didn't cut any leaves I tried to keep all the leaves intact um, just so I can see how the plant would do and I'm feeling the leaves they're so hydrated lesson learned I'm gonna throw these all out there isn't any there's some guys like there's some that are alive still. So this one has roots. I actually wasn't expecting that. Um, you could see the damage here. This leaf looks great. So I'm actually surprised. So maybe let's just, <laughs> I'm just like pulling leaves off. They're just falling. Oh my gosh, they're just falling, guys. <laughs> this is insane. Okay, okay, here's another one. I know she's damaged, but up here, the pond's kind of covering it, but there's a root there. Okay, this isn't as bad. Watch, that's gonna be the only two <laughs> that I find. Done, you're dead. I've like pulled 10 out and there hasn't been any new root growth. There might only be like three that survived. I almost threw this one away. Look, those are all new roots. Yay. This is kind of a nightmare, guys. Oh, yay. Look at this one leaf over here. So you know what? I'm happy because, you know, I was definitely expecting a lot more casualties. Can you still see me? Wow, the camera's doing a really good job because it's, it's actually really dark. Okay, so out of the 30-something <laughs> cuttings, we have one, two, three, four, five. We only have six, guys. I'm gonna put the six of them in a smaller pot and I'm just gonna hope for the best. And I do wanna still stand by the method that I used because that's how I propagated this mother plant. Um, I think because I just soaked all the cuttings in that hot water, it really put the plants in shock and that's why a lot of them just died. <laughs> and like I said, I saw this in other plants too. Like there was an anthurium leaf that I did this to and it just totally disintegrated. So next time, definitely would do this with a plant that's rooted. Okay, so here she is. I'm just gonna put some water. And because they have roots, um, I'm not putting the water line super high. I'm hitting probably just over here. Okay, so I'll just put this right on our row light. This one was just off to the side and yeah. Okay guys, I guess that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am planning to post every single day in December. It's giving me anxiety, but I think it's a really good idea and I'm actually very excited. If y'all have any ideas for me, please put them in the comment section below. Because of that, I might just put two videos a week for the next two weeks in November. And yeah, that includes a Q&A coming up and of course, a November favorites. You guys are the best. I am so sorry I couldn't get to the comments in my Christmas video. Like I said, I've been feeling very tired and I've been trying to disconnect, you know, for a certain period of time per day on social media just to kind of disconnect and relax. Cause I'm starting to realize that when this is your full-time thing you kind of don't turn off when you're constantly just on social media but I read all the comments y'all are so sweet y'all love Christmas too and I just I don't know I I was just so happy to see that thank you guys so much for watching if you've made it to the very end thank you guys so much I greatly appreciate it and I'll see you guys later bye <laughs>